Right. Well, 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 John and Molly, lovely to lovely to have you um, uh, here on the Thanks video. Thanks to you too. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so y you've been associated with the community since when? Well, <laughs> Molly's, Molly's been associated with it since she was about two. <laughs> Well, yeah, in an indirect way, because my, my parents both worked in the Peters Institute mm -hmm. um, with George MacLeod. Uh, so we were brought up, Colin and Ruth and I, with, you know, hearing about the PI. We imbibed the PI with our mother's milk, although we had no idea what the PI, it was just the PI. But they'd, they'd met and, and fell in love there and married from the, from wow. so yeah. And then um, we'd gone on family holidays. And then when I was a student, I um, spent four summers in Dunsmerich looking after the McLeod children. So oh. imbibed a bit of the community life mm -hmm. then. Um, <laughs> and then I came And then in, he came along. I came in to the scene in 1958, mm -hmm. just out of the army, having done my national service where I met George McLeod and went to Iona as a volunteer. And that was when I also came across the community and also came across Molly. <laughs> well, so so Iona is not just about economic discipline, it's about romance for you, Sue. Well, well it's a big part of it. It's always been a big part about, of our life. Almost about everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, we're doing these videos um, to explore um, the Iona economic discipline but i understand that you have it, um, experience of uh, religious economic discipline in a variety of settings could you just could you just talk a little about that well i i can start that off by when we were first married we went to live in gorbals in glasgow and we were part of the gorbals group ministry there Mm -hmm. And part of that ministry was that we had our own economic discipline. We, we shared, we pooled, in fact, all our money. Um, and we, we newly married with some very generous wedding present money, asked if we could keep that aside separately, and, and that was agreed. But the rest of our money, of which we had very little, went into a general pool. The idea was that members of the group who were involved in the economic discipline should live as near to the equivalent of um, the brew money, the, the unemployment benefit, which I think in those days was national assistance. So we were actually, um, at, at that time, in the early 1960s, 1963, we, had, we were given two pounds a week for food and housekeeping and a pound a week pocket money and all our amenities gas and electricity and everything else was and rent was paid for by the group mm -hmm. so if well well what we found was that if you are um in a in a setting like that you're even more careful with turning off lights and gas and electricity because you're accountable to the whole group for for everything we we had a a, a month a weekly meeting on a thursday night with a meal and a communion service as part of that and that was our also our weekly accounting and whoever was took it in turn to be the kind of money person it was mainly me for a long time was it <laughs> <laughs> We had to, we had the two pounds a week for food and housekeeping, we had to account for. We kept an exact account of that during the week. Um, and in fact, I'd done that with my pocket money. I'm a kind of um, neurotic. I need to know where I spent my money. So I'd, I was used to that and I still do it to this day. Those years later, account for every weekly penny I spend. And, um, so the Iona economic discipline is pretty lax compared to what you compared were with that. Um, so we we had to account for what we'd spent, and in the two pounds per person, um, if you'd overspent on food, the group you had to say that, and the group refunded it. Sure. And if you'd underspent, 
you yeah. handed back. You didn't carry it over to the next week and say, oh, I need to buy a big jar of coffee. <coughs> so it was a very strict, <coughs> but that was just what we grew up with and got used to. The pound a week pocket money, you could do what you liked with. You didn't need to account for that at all. And you could save it up. And just to add that the point of it all, yeah. apart from trying to live at the same economic level as our neighbours, although we weren't no. pretending to be, you know, local people, we, we knew we were incomers. But the point of it all was any money that we had, which was over, over from all that, we used for our projects. Mm -hmm. So we were able to do things without having to rely on income from other sources. Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, I mean, three of their group were earning quite reasonable salaries. And so that money was kept and used for projects. For instance, we started a local newspaper. Now, we could never have done that if we'd had to rely on external fin finance, because the people would have pulled the plug after about the first three weeks. But, but we did this local newspaper out of our own resources. And similarly with youth clubs and setting up a camping, a camping center in the North Highland, Northwest Highlands and so on, we could do that with the money that we kept back from the salaries. So it was it wasn't just a, 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 a an Acts of the Apostles thing. It was it had a clear external purpose, uh, which, to my mind, is one of the marks of any successful community project that you have a purpose outside yourself yeah so although we were a member we were members of a family group at that time but inevitably because we were sharing our money if you're sharing your money at that level with people you're very very close to them so the this the, the family group was really a, we have to say secondary in terms of yeah. um a community of people together the gorbals group was our main community so, one other, one, so just going to say one of the things that Ralph Morton was always very clear about, you'll have read it in his books, was that no Christian body can really be taken seriously unless they take economics seriously. Because how you spend your money it shows who you are and what you're about. Could you tell us about the other economic... Um... Um, so disciplines you've participated in? Well, I'll, I'll just say we were about the one we participated in on Iona. When we went. Because we went from, there in 1971 from, Gorbals. from Gorbals to uh, work in, with, in the resident group. I was the warden and Molly eventually became the housekeeper. And at that time, the, everybody on the resident group was paid basic a basic pocket money and the everything same. else was all found so we didn't have to spend any money on food and rent and all that and we got a basic allowance which was the same for everyone whether you were the assistant housekeeper or the assistant gardener or the warden or whatever it didn't matter all were the same uh, and you got an allowance for children and you got an allowance, quite a small allowance for holidays. And that was it. Now, it wasn't so um, strict as the one from Gorbals and you didn't have to account for everything you got, but we were all on the same level, which appealed to us. As a so very again, good. you're very careful with things like electricity and, and gas because you're not just spending your own money, you're spending the community's money, basically. Yeah. Um, how did it make you feel? Did you feel freed by it, constricted oh, yeah. by it, a bit of both? Oh, of immensely both. freed. Mm -hmm. in particular in Gorbals, it was wonderful. Um, our parents had difficulty in understanding how we could do this because they had a different understanding of finance. But for us, it was very liberating. Mm -hmm. And equally on Iona, it was wonderful to be all the same and not to have to worry about whether you were getting more money than somebody else or less money than somebody else. It was great. It was a, a very liberating thing. So, in fact, it wasn't until we'd been married for about 11, 13, 13 years 
when we moved from Iona and we went to Sterling, that for the first time in our lives, we were operating our own money, you know, and never, after 13 years, it was quite a shock. <laughs> I, I, I can still, still remember the, the horror with which I looked at my, my first bank statement, which showed me that I was in debt. I'd, I'd never come across this concept <laughs> before, because up until I was married, I'd been a, living a very sheltered existence, looked after by boarding schools and the army and university and all that stuff. So this was quite a, a, a shock to my system. How, how do you feel about the current Iona community economic discipline? Because by comparison, it must seem um, um, a little um, relaxed, maybe. Well, it's a tithing system, isn't it, mm -hmm. Simon? It's a, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I remember hearing from Jack Orr, who was one of the kind of gurus of our life and when we were new members um, about how they, they worked it in the family groups and so on. And um, how the, the, the wives particularly were demanding a say in how the men spent their money, which was- Well, we were making the tea in the kitchen and they were discussing how the housekeeping money was going to be spent, which was just, so ridiculous. I mean, I think coming to <laughs> as a dispersed community with a huge variety of income levels and, and a huge variety of responsibility, that's the phone, a huge variety of, of responsibilities, a tithing system seemed to make sense. And I think it still does, to be honest. I think it still makes sense. So, I mean, we, 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 we're glad to be part of it. Mm -hmm. um, we, I wouldn't, I, I can't imagine us being um, in a economic discipline of the gorbel sort now. Um, but um, when Molly comes back off the phone, she'll have a word to say about uh, her own experience when she ha had to work part time with um, a, 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 a voluntary organization called Corbel's Brendam Link, where they, they followed the same system as we oh, used on Iona, that. um, with everybody being paid the yeah, same. So that's very mm -hmm. And uh, for my, oh, my money, that's, yes. that's a good system. You're I, I, don't, I don't think they can do that no. now on Iona. I don't, I don't think they do that now on Iona. Yeah. I think there's a, a, a very a variation of pay out there, but we still oh, feel it's well, an ideal beautiful. worth striving for um, to have a flat system of pay. Yeah. Um, when when you the, were when you were leader, did you try and tweak the system at all? Number, what's your whole no, mm -hmm. no. Um, I very much enjoyed uh -huh. working with the new members, um, well, and in well, fact. I with, I don't know whether you still do this, but with the new members groups, we did an economic discipline where everybody pulled money and shared out what was needed. Um, that was good, good fun and a good sort of learning experience. So I tweaked it in that way. We, we did it as new member group, but not as the whole community. No, I didn't try to, to change it. Somebody about the did, did George did George McLeod account yeah, to yeah. anyone? Yeah, did George McLeod account John? himself? Uh, that's a very good question. I have no idea. I think um, from what I heard that um, it was when George was away in America raising money for the community that Ralph Morton and some of the other members at the time introduced the economic discipline. Right. So when George came back, he found that it was up and running. Now, you know, you asked the account and the answer is I have no idea. Right. I have no idea. So um, was, was George ever in a sort of family group later on after he was no longer leader? Well, again, I, I, I assume so. But I, I don't know. Do you so, know if George I've, was in the family group? I've never heard of him. 
being in a family group, but that's not, I mean, people maybe have experience of that. I don't know. I don't know. In the Ron Ferguson book, it says that Lex Miller in the 40s used to give him a hard time over being a member of his club in London. <laughs> I know, but then George is a man of huge contradictions. Um, so, yeah, I'm not surprised. I never knew Lex Miller. He, he was gone before I okay. came around. Did you ever know no, Lex Miller? No, just by name. But I think he certainly was one of the ones that, as you said earlier, introduced the idea of an economic discipline mm -hmm. uh, to the community, um, which was a good thing. And I think it's still a good thing. I mean, the interesting thing about the rule now, of course, it is it's all together. The, the accounting is number three, I think, yes, and the fourfold mm -hmm. rule. And that's a good thing, I think, that it's brought together. So that, because the danger we found uh, in our family groups um, previously was that you did the accounting for the money in great detail, but you were rather skimpy at times over the other <laughs> uh, issues like prayer and Bible reading and yeah. use of time um, and so on. You kind of tended to, they weren't secondary because the economic discipline was so specific. Does, does the, has being in a system of economic discipline, has it ever felt ascetic? It hasn't stopped you enjoying the pleasures of life. It's it's always been in a good balance. Yeah, there were times I remember I found it quite hard in the Gorbals group. And sometimes when there were members of the Gorbals group who chose not to be involved in the economic discipline. Um, it was open to everybody, but some people decided not to be. And that... Sometimes I, I was, you know, that was quite hard when you were young with um, bringing up children, new babies and children. Um, uh, yeah, I can remember occasions when but, I thought, oh, it would be nice to be free of this restraint. <laughs> but equally, though, I mean, I always remember this was a family group situation where when we were accounting and we used to do it in wee groups of three uh, and one of the members, uh, we had to say to her, you need to spend more money on yourself than you're doing. <laughs> she was very reluctant to do that, but she's long dead now, but, but, but we were very concerned that she was skimping on her <laughs> own needs. And we, so that was quite good because you were able uh, to be quite open about that. You know, you, you, it wasn't a taboo. You know, you could talk openly about money and that, as you know, is something that in many church situations, people would never do. They don't, they don't think it's fair to talk about money. And some of the, I don't know what, sorry, when I was away at the phone, I don't know what you've covered, but I just wanted to say, um, some of it rubs off in the rest of your life. When we left Iona, mm -hmm. um, I was working as project coordinator for Glasgow Brendam Link, which worked with families living in poverty. And we had eventually, to begin with, it was, there was no money to employ anybody but me for two days a week, but eventually we had a team of seven of us. And we were all paid the same. Um, I was project coordinator and the others were on a pro rata were paid exactly the same. And our cleaner who cleaned the office was paid at the same rate as well. And that's a very um, kind of powerful thing in, in a community of people working as a team, that nobody's job was any more important than anybody else's. That after I left, um, that changed. They, I don't know what, what <laughs> it wasn't, they just felt it wasn't sustainable, but it was, it was a very special, um, way to work with a group of people that we were, we were really, we were all in this together, <laughs> and we really were. <laughs> so to to draw things together, if if you had a few a few comments to say to the new members who are taking on economic discipline for the first time, um, would you have any any particular advice or comments as to 
how it's affected your life? Well, I, I mean, one of the things I would say is don't, don't, don't worry about it because it's actually a very liberating thing mm -hmm. to be free to talk about money and about your own priorities. Because of course, as you talk, so you reveal what are your priorities, but that's okay because in the Iona community, we're not sitting in judgment on each other. We're mutually accounting to each other and mutuality is the big thing. And also, you may have covered this earlier, but um, although we're accounting for or giving giving 10% of our money to the owner community, we're always um, accounting, accountable and accounting for what we do with the other 90%. That's kind of part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I, I do think it's or a very little bit. Not in detail, but in, in your attitude to money and how you spend. Sorry. Well, I'm I'm going to I'm going to stop recording in a moment. Um, but it's been a huge pleasure to uh, draw on your experience and uh, a lovely contrast with some of our other uh, with some of our other contributors. So thank you so much. You're very welcome, Sam. Indeed. <laughs>